Berlin, an annual protest rally. A protest against something that's invisible to the naked eye, impossible to touch, but that is still present everywhere we go. It is absorbed by the air, dissolves in water, and soaked up by the soil. It's a boy? It's a boy. <laughs> I have a boy too. Это <laughs> Глаз чешется? Да. Какой глаз чешется? Вот этот. А из-за чего, как ты думаешь, сынок? Не знаешь? Нет. Один врач упомянул, что это может быть связано с ГМО, с пестицидами. И вот я с тех пор начала свое расследование. И сейчас, спустя два года, мне кажется, я знаю ответ. We're all very different. But we have one very obvious thing in common. We can't survive without food. GMOs are genetically modified organisms. They first appeared in the food industry in the 1990s. In 1994, the Monsanto Corporation cultivated tobacco that was pest resistant. Genetically modified tomatoes followed soon after. Nowadays, more than 80% of soybeans are genetically modified, as is 100% of papaya, and up to 70% of the most popular dried baby foods have GMOs in them. I started looking at labels when shopping for groceries, as I thought GMO was causing my kids allergy. I soon came to realize that I had been slightly wrong. Berlin was the first stop within this investigation. I happened to be there when anti-GMO activists were getting ready for a rally. We don't need no sea control. Monsanto, leave those genes alone. GMO stand for? Genetically modified organism. What does that mean? Well, it could stand for God move over. GMO could stand for get more obese. Some people say for uh, genocidally motivated organizations. If this is not like a defective car, we can never recall genetically modified seeds from the environment. They are there for the rest of human history. There is no taking it back. Once it's released, it is there forever. You're going to love my science tomorrow. Anyway, and a, a big ball to just it's for the demonstrate. Rally. It's plastic, it's not real, but you know the you know the shackles and the ball and chain and the I have that in my suitcase. At first, I couldn't figure these people out. Were they Luddites simply rejecting anything new, or revolutionaries prepared to shout out about a threat and fight for the health of future generations? Corporations that produce seeds of GMO plants claim that transgenes are absolutely harmless. And what is more, 
They make things drastically easier for farmers by increasing plants' resistance to pests and diseases. They bring high yields, and they could finally help to feed humanity. In 2017, the total area of GM crops reached almost 190 million hectares, which is three times the size of France. Currently, GM crops are cultivated in 28 countries, most of all in the USA, which has 39% of the total area of GM crops in the world. Brazil has 27%, Argentina 13%, while Canada and India have 6% each. At the same time, not only have some individuals given up GMOs, but whole countries too. In 2016, Romania left the Transgenic Cultivating Club, while Portugal and Spain reduced their GM crop areas. Austria, Poland, Venezuela, Greece and Switzerland are all GMO-free. The country I live in, Russia, forbids cultivating GMO, but doesn't forbid selling it. And if baby food contains GMO, maybe that's what's causing my kids' allergy, because that's what I buy. And I decided to look for foods grown, as they say, organically. <laughs> Alexander Konovalov decided to reconsider his diet after his granddaughter was born. Back then, it was really hard to find organic food in stores, so he decided to make organic food himself. Let's start with this. Here's Marta, Krainia, Krasulia, Zorka, Tsiganka. Here we have Zira, I'm going to put it. It's Zira, it's Zira, it's Zira. Let's go further. How not? Ah, we took it on the milk minute last time. Huh? Zira. Ну я говорю, последний раз сдали. А, точно, все, поэтому я. Да, да. На мясо? На мясо. Ну вот здесь мы его ставим, телевизор. Вот они. Здесь телевизор, зимой они смотрят. Да, в двух местах. Вот там мы ставим один, и здесь. Там пчелки летают, бабочки летают, птички, сочная травка. Ну, одним словом. Все, что нужно им для полного счастья. My son has severe allergies, particularly to milk. I decided to take a chance and let my son eat the pancakes with sour cream that the farmer had made. A kind of organic experiment on my own son. I made sure I had some antihistamine tablets on hand just in case. Все, что связано с ГМО, у меня это вызывает антипатию мгновенно. Вот я был в Бразилии, мне не понравилось там, как там поточное производство. И там у них генномодифицированная кукуруза, соя. Прям я ездил, смотрел поля, я ужасался. Нет ни цветочки, в смысле нет ни букашки, ни ничего, ни бабочки, ни, ни, муш, ни мушки над этими полями. Ничего не летает. Безжизненное пространство. Стоят. Идеальные, как солдаты, знаете, стебли кукурузы, ровные один в один. И все безжизненно. Wild insect populations, including bees, are rapidly decreasing all around the world. One theory is that pollen from transgenic crops is becoming sterile, so bees can't extract enough of the nutrients they need from it. Insects just die of disease, hunger, and digestive disorders. Since 1961, the number of bees in the United States has halved. It's even fallen by 90% in places if you count by hectare. And the same thing is happening all over the world. Oh. I should mention that my son didn't have an allergic reaction to the organic milk. Maybe that was just chance. After talking to a staunch GMO opponent, I thought it was time to meet a staunch advocate. The Agrarian University in Moscow. The main argument of those people who are against GMO is that it is not proven. There is no such risk related to the consumption of human organisms of GMO food, distinguishable from traditional analogs. No one. 
Я точно куплю однозначно ГМО свеклу, ГМО морковь. Я не буду покупать традиционные аналоги, если на прилавке она, она окажется. ГМО – это хай-тек, это аграрный хай-тек, это высокие технологии, которые несут в себе колоссальные преимущества по отношению к архаичным вещам. А самым крупным поставщиком нитратов и нитритов в конечную продукцию является органические удобрения. Навоз. Навоз. Глифосат безопаснее навоза. Да, сто процентов. For many years, the global Monsanto company had a glyphosate monopoly. It's one of the ingredients in a herbicide that sells widely under the trade name Roundup. Glyphosate has now spread all over the world. Like nowhere else in the world, India makes you realize just how big the world's population really is. And inevitably, everyone needs to eat. India is always quick to adopt the latest in high-tech agriculture. The Green Revolution is a striking example. The strong resurgence of agriculture, a process that began here a few decades ago. But as time passed, it turned out that rapid growth always comes at a price. In India, glyphosate isn't just used as a fertilizer. Some farmers use it as a poison. Many have taken their own lives after cultivating genetically modified crops. Agro-corporations granted them loans they could never pay off to buy seeds and pesticides that failed to realize the profits that were promised. Under the crushing weight of that debt, they drink glyphosate as a way out. The Punjab state was always seen as the breadbasket of India. Now it's known for colossal suicide rates among farmers. It's a painful procedure killing yourself. Mm -hmm. So just before killing, they take a swig. Before you kill yourself, you take your drugs and then you go. Uh, you take a drink, mm -hmm. it gives you courage and then you kill yourself. Most of the suicides are between 20 and 35. 35. Uh, youngsters. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason for this is old people learn how to survive. Mm -hmm. Youngsters, when they break up in the family, the expenditure is more, but they don't have the experience of the older people to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the youngsters die. This is a man who, for many years, has tried to draw attention to the serious issue of suicide. He talks to the families of the dead, and sounds the alarm over this far-reaching and widespread tragedy. So, what's going on? Why are farmers taking their own lives? And what does that have to do with GMO? Ashu Malik is a diver. He'll pull a body out of the water if the relatives are willing to pay. For him, it's a business. Ashu doesn't work for the state. If a body isn't identified and no one comes to claim it, he throws it back in the water. The second was on the Farmers Commission itself, which researched the suicide in Punjab, and they came to, to the conclusion that about 2,100 to 2,200 people commit suicides per year. Our reception was more. We were saying about 4,000 commit suicide. Farmers' body was saying it's even more. They were saying about 6,000 commit suicide per year. और ये वाले जो कैमरे हैं, ये कैमरे उसके लिए जब डेड बॉडी आती है ना, तो एक या दो मिनट यहाँ पे रुकती है जरूर। तो वो यहाँ रिकॉर्ड के अंदर हमारे पास रिकॉर्डिंग में हो जाता है उसका। तो रिकॉर्डिंग में उसका बैकअप डाटा जो होता है ना उसमें देख लेते हैं उसको कि वो बॉडी आगे निकल गई या नहीं निकल गई ये बच्चे खा जाते हैं जी जस्ट 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 दिस इज व्हाट यू हॉरिफाई द पीपल बट यू नीड करेज टू शो दिस Как мне рассказали, этот дом построили местные жители для родственников, которые приезжают сюда, чтобы искать в этом канале тела своих погибших родственников, которые совершили суицид, фермеры. И а, в этом доме они живут, и каждый день они выходят на берег этого канала, которые 
дала своих близких. What kind of plants uh, do they grow? They used to grow cotton. 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 Wheat and cotton. Wheat and cotton. Bt cotton. Bt cotton um, has been promoted as uh, something which actually solves the problems of the Indian farmers who are uh, cultivating cotton and who are in a crisis. Mm -hmm. Something which comes as a, uh, is, is thrust upon the farmers as a solution starts creating more problems. Bt cotton seeds are sold by the Monsanto Corporation, a leading producer and distributor of transgenic seed crops. There are many places where uh, Bt cotton is actually not suitable for cultivation. Bt cotton uh, seed companies, on the seed packets, they say that this is suitable both for irrigated and non-irrigated conditions. So this is basically deception of the farmers. And the third thing is that they actually spend huge amounts of money on advertising. They show images of American farmers with tractors and say, you're going to be rich. And just take the seed. And you don't have to pay for it yet, you know? Because you're going to be a millionaire, you'll be able to pay for it. They don't tell the farmer you can't save the seed. They don't tell the farmer it might fail because it's not meant for dry areas, it's meant for irrigation. Mm -hmm. The farmer doesn't have irrigation. They don't tell the farmer that uh, uh, it's hugely unreliable. Mm -hmm. So the f farmer, takes it on credit, doesn't really have a sense of how, how much cost he'll have to bear. It doesn't work. So he goes and takes another bunch of seed, and a third bunch of seed. And then the harvest comes and there's no harvest because the pest has attacked it. Mm -hmm. And in two years' time, the agents who sold the seed and the pesticide come and say, sorry, you haven't paid your loan. This land that you have is ours now. That's the day the farmer quietly goes, borrows money for the last bottle of pesticide, and most of these pesticides kill, and he goes to his field and drinks the pesticide. We visit families, and I personally have talked to widows, and I will say, what was the debt? And they bring out packages of seed, and they're all BT. As an anti-GMO activist, Vandana Shiva is known worldwide. She lays the blame for mass suicide amongst Indian farmers squarely on the shoulders of corporations that sell the seeds. This for us is a very special place. So this is our seed bank. About 2,500 varieties of different kind of crops from the different wheats to the different rices to the different millets. These are millets, which we call forgotten foods because the Green Revolution... Forgotten foods? Yeah, we call them because the Green Revolution declared them as inferior crops and they have 40 times more nutrition. Mm -hmm. Vandana and her followers are fighting for plant diversity. She's afraid that, thanks to American corporations, there will soon only be four kinds of potato left and a couple of wheat varieties. And if, God forbid, any of those remaining types should fall prey to a new strain of disease, that could herald the start of worldwide famine. That's why she's committed to saving seeds, varieties that have been cultivated in India for centuries and yielded abundant harvests. Of course, her little seed bank can't compare to the scale of GMO plantations, but I will never be able to forget what I've seen in this irrigation canal. My investigation would soon take me to England, where, through an unexpected turn of events, I'd find myself discussing India's suicide problem with a member of the House of Lords. How, you might wonder, are Punjabi farmers connected to the House of Lords? Surprisingly, the connection is as straight as it gets. Andrusha! 
Привет! Привет! Ты меня видишь? Да? Сзади видишь? Речка, вот там мост. Лондон. Это город такой. Англия, страна. There are no GMO crops being grown in England for now, but the prospect of applying transgen technology in agriculture here is being discussed extensively. My guide is Henry Rollins. He's opposed to the use of glyphosate and an advocate for long-term GMO studies. It's Henry who's going to transform my attitudes towards food and health. We'll come back to that later. But now we're going to a meeting that's really very important to me. How should we conduct ourselves in her presence? So we should be uh, respectful, with the, but specifically with the British manners. OK. And also we, we should call her Lady Margaret. Lady Margaret of Mar is a member of the House of Lords, an elected hereditary peer. She holds the original Earldom of Mar, the oldest titled peerage in the United Kingdom. Lady Margaret is also a farmer. She herself has suffered from the use of agricultural chemicals and has, for many years now, fiercely opposed its proliferation. Henry II, King of England. Yes, we've got lots of kings. Everyone was king. <laughs> John and John the first. <laughs> GM, GM, GM. You have mm -hmm. a, you also have a GM, a GM good news file. You just yes, saw. you have a good news file. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I use it here when my brain goes dead. Lady Margaret <laughs> agrees to tell her poignant story at her home after inviting us over for organic tea with organic English pudding. Sorry, I've, I've set off down before you. Lady Margaret used to be a farmer. I say used to be because, despite her affection for agriculture, she had to give it up after what happened to her. Mm. We were dipping sheep. I got some in my boot. A, a lamb splashed the dip and it got into my Wellington boot. And then about three weeks after that, I got up one morning and I felt so tired, I had to go back to bed. And I got sicker and sicker and sicker. And at, at one stage, my brain wouldn't work, so what I was thinking wasn't what came out of my mouth. Mm. And I was very up and down. I would be crying one minute and cross the next, you know, and, and mm. it affected the, the nerves in my brain. Mm. And if you touch my skin, it was so sore that I would cry. For a long time, Lady Margaret's doctors couldn't work out what was causing such severe symptoms. She suspected that she had been poisoned by the chemicals used in the sheep dip. Gradually, I've got a little bit worse and a little bit worse, so now I'm, I'm on the oxygen for 16 hours a day. I still keep going. It's <laughs> very good. Determined to. And, and, this this is is that, yeah. and then I have a machine that measures all my oxygen levels. 16 hours a day using special breathing apparatus. 16 hours a day. It's hard to imagine the sheer strength of this woman's character. I've tried suicide, you know, I've been there. And, and you get impulsive feelings of suicide. And this is repeated by farmers, lots of farmers, and a lot of them have died from suicide. Really? People in, over the hill farming. The husband went out at about 10 o'clock at night to see the sheep, and, and it was lambing time. And he didn't come in, he didn't come in. So his wife thought she'd take him a flask of coffee. She thought maybe he'd got a diff difficult lambing. And she found him hanging. You know? And this it happens a lot of times. Um, it, it's it, it, it's, it's uh, because it um, affected the uh, brain? It, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and it, the interesting thing is, you feel the need to be suicide, and then 10 minutes later, it's gone. This is what's so odd about it. And once I realised that was what was happening, because I used to think about dying every day, 
Mm-hmm. But once I realised that it was the stuff affecting my brain, I could push it to one side mm-hmm. and get on with what I was doing. That's not India. That's England. Farmers in many different parts of the world are facing very similar problems. Is it possible that farmers all over the earth, by using ever more chemicals, are risking their health and even their lives? Did you start fight against uh, um, companies and pesticides, pesticides, GMO, because of uh, this yes. situation? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I started asking questions in the House of Lords when I realised what it was. It was three years before I knew what, what my illness was. Mm-hmm. And once I realised what it was, I started asking questions in the House of Lords. And then I had all sorts of people who'd been affected coming to me, writing to me, mm-hmm. mainly the wives of the men, mm-hmm. not the men themselves because the wives were worried about their husbands. I want to ask you, what is more dangerous, GMO or maybe pesticides, uh, herbicides? I don't think one is any more dangerous than the other. I think they're both dangerous, and when you put them together, they're very dangerous. Okay. Yes. The sheep dip that Lady Margaret believes poisoned her was an organophosphate, the same category of pesticide that glyphosate belongs to. Glyphosate was initially created to remove rust and mineral deposits from metal pipes. When it gets inside a pipe, it binds minerals and flows out of the pipe, taking all the mineral particles with it. So, when this herbicide is spread over our vegetables, it takes away the minerals that we need. And, and put them onto your, your thingy, you know, yeah. the test. Yeah. They've picked up that they've found breast milk, glyphosate and German breast milk. Yes, yes. Human breast milk. Yeah, that's the study we did with Mums Across America. Yes. Yeah. Everyone worldwide will be able to test exactly what mm. toxic chemicals are in our, in our bodies. Um, we've already started glyphosate testing in America. Uh, in my opinion, the only way to break the system is to make this whole argument personal. If, if we can make this argument personal to the general population, not just farmers, mm-hmm. not just people who live in rural areas, but everyone. And the only way to make it personal is for you to find out exactly what chemicals are in your own body. As we were filming, England was at a crossroads. Would they allow GM crop cultivation or not? Welsh farmers were firmly against it. Gerald Miles was at the forefront of the campaign. This is what we grow on the farm. It's like a super muesli. Ah, super muesli. Yeah. OK. And we soak it in whey, which is a byproduct which is left after making... After you make organic cheese, you take it out of the milk wow. and you're left with a liquid which is called whey and we soak it in that so it brings up the protein uh-huh. for the corn, for the pigs. And uh, is there any GMO? No, none. <laughs> Sorry for my question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> none. <laughs> Over my dead body. When a uh, pig has a curly tail, it's happy. When it's straight, it's sad. (laughs) They're happy now that you take it. Yes, I can see. Gerald Miles leads the group of activists, and their goal is never to allow GM crops into Wales. He's afraid that if England starts experimenting with transgenic crops, it would inevitably cross the border through cross-pollination between transgenic and regular plants. If thousands of people died tomorrow of poisoning to Roundup, it was it would be an easy proof. But this is gently, slowly mm. affecting the human race. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, up until now, we found uh, just from the first uh, 500 samples that have been mm-hmm. tested, over 95% of uh, the population in America has glyphosate in their urine, which is, uh, compared with most other environmental chemicals, is very, very, very high. But also, um, it's been found in, in breast milk and also in, in blood as well. Mm-hmm. 
What Henry had told me about anyone being able to take a test to discover their own levels of glyphosate in the body really impressed me. I also discovered that Roundup isn't just used on GM crops, it's incredibly popular in traditional agriculture too. Does that mean that even if we buy GMO-free produce, we still can't be sure that it's also glyphosate-free? I decided that my son and I would take the test to see if we have any glyphosate in our bodies. I was convinced they wouldn't find it in my family. Well, maybe just a small amount. After all, I do try to be careful about choosing food. Some scientists consider glyphosate to be the direct cause of the alarming recent increase in autism cases. The World Health Organization has also recognized glyphosate as a possible carcinogen. More than 90 GM crops are cultivated here in the USA, including corn, soy, potatoes, rapeseed, and alfalfa. Together, they form the majority of American agricultural exports and provide half the world's cattle fodder. 94% of rapeseed and 95% of sugar beet cultivated in the USA is genetically modified, along with 93% of soybeans and 90% of cotton and corn. But the USA is also a country in which the most powerful movement against GMO and glyphosate is growing. Another rally is being held outside the doors of the Environmental Protection Agency. Glyphosate, the most widely used herbicide in the world that they are allowing to be sprayed on our food. It's being found in our water, our air, our rain, our streams, honey, bread, urine, breakfast cereal, breast milk, and Pediasure. One out of two men and one out of three women are expected to get cancer. Raise your hand if you have a loved one in your family with cancer. I am so sorry. This is the state of America today. This is a very high percentage. This is a health crisis in America. We have the highest rate of infertility and sterility and miscarriages in, in recorded history, 30%. The fact is, if we do not put the welfare of our children first before profit, we destroy our future. Sen Honeycutt is the leader of an organization called Mums Across America. I heard about her from Henry, who's worked with me in England. Another reason I really wanted to meet this woman was that she has managed to cure her own son's allergies. I have the same problem. I have a son and he has an allergy, uh, everything connected with milk. Uh, yes. And, and we've been drinking milk for what, tens if not hundreds of thousands of years, right, as a human race? Yeah. Why all of a sudden is your son allergic to milk, right? And my sons, two of my sons too. It's, it's not our kids, it's the food. In 2016, there was no requirement in the US to label a product's packaging to show whether or not it contained transgens. Finding a product with no GMOs is a real challenge, and even if you do succeed, that still doesn't mean there's no glyphosate, not even in organic food markets. Wheat in America, and especially in Canada and Northern America, is sprayed with glyphosate. So many people now, one out of four Americans might even, even be higher, or sorry, one out of four females over the age of 30 have 
have a gluten intolerance now. But I believe it's not really the gluten, it's it's the um, Roundup and glyphosate that's being sprayed as a drying agent because it's destroying their gut lining and then they can't process it. And then the body acknowledges yes. that as a gluten intolerance. In fact, there's been studies to show that one bowl of spinach back in the 50s is equal now to several dozen bowls of spinach now. There's actually less nutrition in our food. And I attribute that to the pesticides which draw the, deplete the soil and actually draw out the vitamins and minerals in the plants and in the soil. If you don't have healthy, nutritious soil, you're not going to be able to grow healthy, nutritious plants, and you're not going to be able to feed animals healthy, nutritious food, which will then have less nutrition, right? So it's an entire cycle. Now many Americans eat a pound a day. And that is just so much meat. And you must consider not only the fats and the hormones in it, but that they're being fed GMO feed. And GMO feed can have up to 400 parts per million of glyphosate on it. And if it has 400 parts per million of glyphosate, it has even much higher levels of the other chemicals that are in Roundup that are completely untested. Mm -hmm. I don't know if many people know this, but the end product, Roundup, has never been safety tested, only the, they call it the one active chemical ingredient. Could glyphosate harm people? We wrote to Monsanto to ask. The reply simply informed us that all information can be found on the company's website, which of course states that all products are safe and environmentally friendly. We wrote again, hoping to make an appointment to meet a representative. This time, we were referred to another website, belonging to a company that promotes innovations in biotechnology. We never had the opportunity to talk directly to anyone from Monsanto. We are at the master class of American mothers, who want to bring attention to the problem of GMO and glyphosate. How many of you are here because you mostly talk about GMOs and related pesticides? Raise your hand. Okay. I guess my situation is that all of a sudden, many, many people in my family, younger generations, starting with myself, are sick. From myself with an autoimmune condition, to my cousins with cancer, to my children with allergies and anxiety disorders. And I've done a lot of work I've started school gardens, I've done parades in three different states. Okay. So I heard apathy, I heard frustration, anger. Mums across America believe that the GMO and glyphosate situation could be changed if everyone paid attention to what's printed on packaging and only bought safe products. Demand for healthy food will generate the supply of healthy food. But if the consumer is to be able to choose what he or she buys, all products have to be labelled properly. That's what these women are fighting for. Their weapons are rallies, petitions and lectures. After the workshop, Zen Honeycutt invited me over and told me about how she cured one of her children's allergies and another's autism. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So in the fall of 2013, mm -hmm. uh, we noticed that Bodhi was having some difficulties in school. It was a little tough. Math got a little bit tough all of a sudden. And um, he started getting very angry and um, had a rash around his mouth mm -hmm. as well. So that's when I realized that that's what glyphosate does. It destroys the beneficial gut bacteria. It actually targets the beneficial gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I also got him tested from the lab for glyphosate, and we mm -hmm. tested his urine. And he tested 8.7 parts per billion positive in his urine. And this was eight times higher than was found anywhere in Europe when they tested 18 different countries. And we went all organic because we realized that the meat he was eating was mm -hmm. also, um, that animals were being fed GMOs, mm -hmm. which is highly sprayed with glyphosate. And he did, within six weeks, we retested him and his glyphosate levels were no longer detectable and his autism symptoms were gone. All the behavioral issues were gone and they've never come back. It's been over two years. One time I was eating and this kid said, why aren't you eating regular food like Doritos and Cheetos? And I said, no, you are the one who's eating the GMO junk and the non-regular food. I'm eating the regular food. 
Yeah, you're eating normal food, right? Mm -hmm. They're the ones that eat not normal food. <laughs> good thinking, Brody. Very good. And these guys encouraged me, you know, after mm -hmm. we had a labeling campaign here in California and we lost, I was crying in the parking lot and was very, very upset. And Ben, what did you say to me? Mm -hmm. I said, Mom, it's okay. It's, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Even Star Wars took six episodes. Yeah. <laughs> In her stories, Zen mentioned Professor Seralini from France. He studied the health impacts of genetically modified foods and Roundup. Not human health, though, but rats. The results divided the academic community, being both backed and severely criticised. We met the professor in California. What were the results of it? So we decided to take 200 rats and to give them an equilibrated diet mm -hmm. with uh, the major GMO, GMO. Uh, containing Roundup, and with Roundup alone, with a regular diet. Uh -huh. And we saw in both cases big mammary tumors mm -hmm. on rats and also kidney leakage, very heart, kidney diseases, mm -hmm. and liver problems. Mm -hmm. And also, the sexual hormones were uh, disrupted. So there, were, there was uh, less testosterone and more estrogens and the reverse way. Mm -hmm. So um, we thought that this was really a problem for GMOs on the long term, consuming GMOs on the long term, or having this pesticide on the long term in the mm -hmm. tap water, mm -hmm. because it's a major pesticide of the world. There are some laboratories in the US that have started checking products for glyphosate content when customers ask. And we, I think we're doing it more for our children than for ourselves because, uh, you know, they got it will, people use it more and more and it will become accumulating in their body. My task was to develop a method to detect glyphosate because glyphosate was considered safe uh, for many, many, many years. Uh, for that reason, no one really developed a method to test for it in food because if it's safe, there's no reason to test for it. But the World Health Organization, they come out and say, it's now a possible carcinogen. And with that, I had to come up with a way that you could potentially detect glyphosate. At this point, I mean, there's, there's no scientific proof that it absolutely does harm you. There's no definitive proof. That is a carcinogen. And, but glyphosate, it's a possible, it's a potential. So it's not to say that it actually is bad for you, but it might. It might. Would you feed your children with food containing glyphosate? Yes. Unfortunately, because it's, it's been used for decades, and everyone uses it. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere. It's in all foods. Uh, it's almost impossible to avoid uh, because it's so water soluble, even run off water. Uh, a farm may be organic, but they're organic. That doesn't mean that the farm next to them is organic. Mm -hmm. And if they use glyphosate and it runs off, there's possible contaminations that it can occur and there's no way to avoid it. Uh, but would I purposely feed my daughter, you know, glyphosate-laden food? Uh, probably not. Uh, if I had a choice, then no, yeah. Future scientists prove that GM products really are harmful, and the human race decides to revert to a world free of GMO and glyphosate. Would we even be able to? Have we passed the point of no return? Transgenic pollen can travel dozens of kilometers and pollinate regular plants. GM crops are more resistant and can force out natural vegetation. And that could result in ecocide for the whole planet the irreversible disappearance of natural diversity and eventually of life itself. Traveling around the world, I asked different people the same question. But what exactly mm -hmm. we have to do? I think it's 
It's impossible. It's Nothing is impossible. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. We mustn't let it be impossible. We did it with, after all, with the tomatoes, the GM tomatoes. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't got them. They, yes, get, they put them on our shelves. They, they put them on our shelves in this country and no one will buy them, so they took them off. The, the person who created the first GM crop, which was a GM tomato, is now uh, thinks that GM crops are not the, the way forward. So the actual designer of the first GM crop, the first, mm -hmm. uh, which was a GM tomato with fish genes, mm -hmm. actually doesn't think that GM crops are the, are the, are the future. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting. And there are yes. actually no um, GMO tomatoes now available anyway. The latest news is that sales of conventional food has dropped $4 billion this year. And organic sales are rising 30% a year. So we are really increasing a lot of sales by spreading the word like this, by talking to each other, by talking to our mom friends. You know, moms buy 85% of the food, so I'm going to give 85% of the kudos to the moms. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. We have power as consumers. So it's important that people make, that they vote with their pocket, that they vote with their fork. Instead of worrying about politicians, vote with your money. Use your money to buy organic food. So if you go to the grocery store and you see a product that says canola, which is known as rapeseed in Europe, uh, soy, corn, sugar beet, which is used to make sugar, all of these things are modified. Put the product back on the shelf. I guarantee you that the grocery stores themselves will bend over backwards to supply the food that consumers want to eat. We are not forced to eat their food. It's still a choice. Right now we have choice. But organic is too expensive, I think. What? It is. You know what? It's, che it's cheaper than funerals. <laughs> So, have there been any changes concerning GMO and glyphosate over the last two years? Well, the UK government approved field tests of GM wheat and potatoes. Henry Rowlands thought people would start taking glyphosate tests en masse in 2016. But that hasn't happened yet. The US introduced a law on product labelling. Packaging must now include information about any synthetic ingredients, including GMO but consumers can only find out by scanning a special Q code with a smartphone, which isn't particularly convenient, as not everybody has one. Sen Honeycutt continues her legal battle for adequate labelling, but so far seems to be losing. In February 2018, a federal judge in California ruled that people don't need a label warning them glyphosate content could cause cancer. Что касается лично меня, я, конечно, очень сильно изменила свою жизнь, особенно после того, как получила результаты тестов на глифосат в организме моем и моего ребенка. Вот эти шкалы здесь наглядно видно. Зеленый вариант нормы, у меня в оранжевом. А это шкала Андрея, у него в красном. То есть критическая масса глифосата в организме. I have now changed my diet completely and try to buy only organic products. My son and I have started cooking at home more often, and I must say, I didn't have to wait long for a result. My son's allergy symptoms have gone. I hope our bodies now have reduced glyphosate levels too, but I don't want to retake the test just yet. I'm too scared.